Praise the Lord. Well, it's Tuesday, April 14th, our second night of our uh, virtual revival. And so I just want to welcome everyone that's on this service tonight and those who will be listening later. Praise God. You know, every day um, Kenneth Jr. uploads it and I put it out to everybody that doesn't tell me to stop. So uh, praise God. Amen. Amen. So, so I wanted to still have people coming in. So I wanted to uh, start the service tonight with a prayer. Barbara, would you take us into prayer? Dear God, as we come before you today, we thank you, God, for this lovely day, God. We ask, God, that you just bless the speakers, the singers, Lord. We ask, God, that you would just minister to those that need your uh, uplifting, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So now I'm going to turn it over to Kenneth Jr. so that he can uh, lead us in some praise and worship tonight. How are we doing tonight, family? I just Where wanted to that? come and, and do a little worship tonight. I felt led of the Spirit to come on and do these songs. The Lord uh, prompted me to do that, and I just wanted to come on tonight and give God glory. I know we're all uh, at home today, and I uh, just want to uh, come out and be a part of what God wants to do in our lives. Amen. So tonight, I just want to give uh, all glory and honor to God. He's the captain of my ship and the Lord of my life. Amen. Amen. And uh, I'm going to do some of the older ones tonight that I've done for a while. The first one tonight is Great is Your Mercy. Amen. Great is Your Mercy. hungry tonight, amen. How many is thirsty? Longing to have more of him, amen. can 
life and me I don't understand Express my desire to be closer to you, but I am here now. With my hands lifted high, tears in my eyes, I cry to, to me with the fire. To, to me.
that he knows our name. Amen. He knows our name. He knows exactly where we are. What we need in our life. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He knows my name. He knows my name.
coming to his presence without fear <laughs> of Hashem, the house of peace, the house of prayer, the house of prayer, Bethlehem, where we can come here and worship. We don't have to be ashamed or afraid. Just to come to you and thank you because you've made this possible. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. peace. God is among us. Amen. Well, we have had a few more visitors come this evening. Welcome, everyone. Praise God. I don't know about you guys, but... Uh, uh, 
during our praise and worship tonight, I was uh, recording on Facebook Live. Amen. Amen. And we had probably about three or four people that joined in on Facebook Live. So uh, I'm going to see how I can do that a little bit better as we continue on with our revival. Praise God. You know, I was just, as, as uh, Kenneth Junior was singing, you know, I was just praying and praying. You know, that's what we need today is intercessory prayer because we never know who's listening or who will be listening. Amen. Amen. And I just pray tonight. I just, I just proclaim peace. I speak peace over every household alone tonight with all the worries and all the struggles that everyone's going through that we need peace. Amen. 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 You know, in the beginning, God would come and he would have fellowship in the evening with Adam and Eve. Amen. And tonight I was thinking about that. I was, I was praying and the spirit was moving in this song service. Amen. And I just could feel his presence. And I just closed my eyes and I just imagined him walking through. Amen. Amen. So I just really encourage you as we go through these nights and prior to the services that we just take time alone with God and reach out to him and pray for the service because we never know who's going to hear amen and who's going to participate in the needs that they have praise God amen amen, amen. Kenneth you have a you have a special tonight right yes can I just say that this song that he's gonna do for us tonight um man it speaks to me every time i hear it and i i i don't know about you guys but i really individualize it to myself amen because so many times in our life that we've gone through things we've done things we're not really proud of and just to know that Jesus thought we were worth dying for. Right. Amen. I, I don't know about you, but I can't hardly even speak that out loud without it touching my heart. It changed my life. Amen. 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 Come on. You ready? Ready, brother. Sorry. All right. There we go. There we go. Oh yeah. You thought I was worth saving. Yes. So you came and changed my life. You thought I was worth keeping. So you clean me up inside You thought I was to die for So you came and sacrificed your life So I could be free So I could be whole So I could tell everyone I know You thought I was worth saving So you came and changed my life Oh, it was worth keeping So you cleaned me up oh, You thought I was to die Oh! 
and ever. Forever. 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 Because I am free. Because, because I, I am whole. Sing a holy, hallelujah, glory to the God who changed my life and was sick forever. Oh, forever, because I am free. Cause I am whole Forever, forever And never, and never I will sing For you have made me whole Praise God, I know about y'all That just so powerful amen who said that the spirit of god could not be in your living room hello amen amen you know it says for us to go to our secret place and hide yes. away and pray to him amen sound like a living room to me yeah that sounds like the <laughs> living room it sounds like the bedroom it sounds like the car driving down the road amen mm -hmm. amen man i'm telling you we have so much to be thankful for and that song just it just hits home every time I hear it. You know, just the spirit just speaks to my soul. I don't yeah. know about y'all, but it really does. You know, I'm so excited about what God is doing. I know everybody thinks that there's loom and gloom, but if you're listening, if you're if you're listening to what the world has to say to you, then it is loom and gloom. But I'm telling you, mm -hmm. I've got my source plugged in to the to god yes. almighty to the throne room amen and you know what he says he's got good news for us praise god and that good news is the gospel of jesus christ amen, amen. Jesus is the same today as he was yesterday and he will be forever and you know what that is comforting to my soul praise god amen so I always want to ask if there's a testimony tonight that someone would like to share. You're certainly not obligated, but if you've got the fire burning inside you, you probably have a few things to say. Praise God. I don't want to take that opportunity. I want to open it up for anyone that would, would like to just give a, a praise offering to the Lord tonight. Everybody's quiet. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So I do have a few prayer requests tonight. My little baby grandson, Connor, got beat up on the playground today. He got a stitch in his baby lip, and it's all swollen. But praise God, he's made it through the horrible part. Mm. Just want to pray that, you know, he's not uh, too traumatized. And... Uh, Right. That that heals quickly, Amen. I spoke Amen. to my I spoke to my aunt Barbara Gill today. I had sent her the link for the services, and she called me, Amen. And uh, you know she still needs prayer. She's still got a number of things going on in her physical body that she needs healing for, Amen. 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 So let's remember her and my uncle Corbett. <clears throat> And all those family members that need salvation, need healing, need deliverance tonight. Yes. You want to always keep them in prayer. You know, the Bible tells us 
the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Yes. Amen. And so I'm just, uh, I'm thankful that the throne room is always open. Yes. Amen. 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 Praise God. Anybody else have any prayer requests? Yeah, just uh, the, pray that all my things go through. Uh, if this is the job, temporary job that I'm supposed to have, uh, that all the paperwork you get through and I'll be done and over with and start work. So. Amen. 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 Let's remember. Uh, let's remember Melvin's family. Uh, somebody else comes along. A number of people that have a number of people that have uh, illness and sickness in their lives. God's going to save them and he So we need to, uh, we need to remember them in prayer. You know, all our families have different things going on. We need to keep them in prayer every day. Amen. I don't want to go to heaven with all, without all my family. Praise God. Amen. Amen. And that includes my church family right. and their, and their family. And so on and so on. Amen. Right. <laughs> Amen. Brother Melvin, did you have something? I saw you undo your mic. Save. You know, He's save having yourself. a conversation. Melvin, brother, did you have some prayer requests tonight? <clears throat> Just keep our family in your prayers. Amen. Please, of course. Yes. Alrighty. I want to ask my mom. She is a mighty prayer warrior. I want to ask her if she'll pray over all the prayer requests tonight for us. Father, I thank you that we can come to you any moment, any hour of the day. You neither sleep nor rest. No, you don't slumber. You know everything that's going on with us, Father. At any time of the day, night, hour, Father, I thank you that Connor's injury was not what I had imagined when she called me, but we can go to you and that you take care of things. And sometimes, Father, we only have time to say, God, help me. And you do answer that quickly, Father. You've answered me many times that way whenever something has happened. And that's all we have to have time to do is say, God help me. But Father, I ask that each and every family tonight that's uh, viewing this, listening to this, reaching out to them, Father God, we ask that you minister to every need. I ask you to continue to touch Barbara and Corbett, Father, and do the work that needs to be done. I know that they can't even run to the doctor. She told me the other day she ran to the, she couldn't go and take him to the doctor. And he needed to go. And she said, Linda, I didn't have anybody else to depend on. She said, I just cried out to the Lord and said, Lord, you know the situation. You know that we can't just go run to the hospital when the things are not doing right. And she said, and God touched him. And that's what God wants us to be. He, we are his children. He wants us to be dependent on him, Father. I thank you that we can do that. Lord, I thank you that you're doing a work in Melvin's family. I praise you, Lord, that you've brought them into the church. And Father, I ask that you just meet every need that they have, God. Every family member that we have that's not serving you, God. We ask that you just meet the need and that you save them. Give these people jobs that need jobs. Father, I ask you to continue to build a hedge of protection around us so that we do not get any plague near our dwelling, Father, any pestilence coming near us. And Father, just do the work that needs to be done as only you can. And I'll give you praise for it. We will give you praise for every answer that you meet. And all these people that are not only our children, but the people that we reach, the people we face every day, that we even see sometimes just on the phone, on Facebook, Father, or on Messenger, Lord. I ask you to meet those needs, Father God, in Jesus' name, that they have 
in their lives, and we will give you praise for it. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. I want to turn it over to Kenneth Sr. tonight, who is our featured minister. Praise God. Okie doke. Everybody, if you would, turn to the chapter one of Daniel. You think, uh, that's where I was Sunday in Daniel, but not chapter one. Daniel is a very prophetic book, and it gives us an awful lot of things to learn from about ourselves and how to conduct ourselves in uh, good times and in bad. Because Daniel had a lot of good times, and Daniel had a lot of bad times in his life. Amen. Amen. I, do you want me to, is, we're just going to keep it like this? That's yeah. fine. Okay. Chapter one, and verse one. You know, up until a certain point, it's a lot like America today, up until a certain point, Daniel's life was going great. And his three friends' lives were going great. But lurking in the background was what you might call an 800 pound bear called Babylon. And uh, the prophets of Israel had been saying for hundreds of years that Israel needed to repent. And the true prophets of God in America today have been saying for all of my lifetime and really before that, that America needs to repent. And an awful lot of people in America have just blown that off and forgot about it and gone about their business and played church instead of speaking God and calling up on God and repenting themselves and fasting and praying and just crying out to God for a, for a nation that needs God and needs to seek God with a whole heart. And uh, in the background, it was a an invisible 8,000 pound gorilla called, and I hate to even say the word because it's so been said so often, it's an invisible gorilla, it's the coronavirus. It's pestilence, it's chapter 24 of the book of Matthew. God is sending out a warning and this may very well be the last warning we get between now and the rapture. Can you say amen? Amen. Between now and the rapture. Their life was going great. Daniel and uh, Hananiah and Mishael and Azariah. That's the Hebrew names of the children that were renamed by the uh, Babylonians after they were captured and taken away. They were, these men, four men were princes in Israel. They had the best of everything. In church, you may not think it, but in America, compared to most of the world we have, the best of everything. Can you say amen? Yes. Amen. amen. We do. I mean, there are people around the world that don't know where their next meal is coming from. Amen. There are people around the world that look at their children's swollen bellies from, uh, from starvation, and it's just more than they can handle. But that's not the problem here in America. The problem in America is sin. And there's a price that always has to be paid for sin. The Bible says there is pleasure in sin for a season. Amen. I want you to know here in America, the season has come. The season is gone. The pleasure is gone. And now it's payday. Now this country is paying for that sin. Good people, that, that kind of people that don't have, that aren't able to work and make the kind of money they were making before, good people are paying for that. Christians are paying for that. 
Yep. Daniel and his three friends that the Babylonians named, renamed Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Amen. Amen. They were having a great time. And all of a sudden, here comes this enormous army from the east. And a general, a king leading them, Nebuchadnezzar. And in the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon yes. and to Jerusalem, and besieged it. And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand with part of the vessels of the house of God, which he carried into the land of Shinar to the house of his God, and he brought the vessels into the treasure house. And the king spake unto, we're all, uh, are we all adults here? Yes or no? Yes. Just keep PG-13, please. And the king spake unto Ashpenaz, the master of his eunuchs, that she should bring certain of the children of Israel and the king's seed of the princes, children in whom were, was no blemish, but well-favored and skillful in all wisdom, cunning in knowledge and understanding science, and such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace and whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. I'm going to stop there in the reading. Daniel and his three friends were princes. They were of royal blood. <clears throat> Up until now, they had had the best of things. Mm -hmm. They were taken to Babylon. Certain things were done to them that altered their life forever. That PG enough. Mm -hmm. Certain things were done to them that altered their life forever. Their right. life would never be the same. It would not be. It never be what they had dreamed it would be, thought it would be, assumed it would be, knew it would be, and now it wouldn't be. I want to talk tonight for a little while about bad things happen to good people. Now what? We're good. I'm going to say that again. Good. Bad things happen to good people. Bad things have happened to you. Amen. And me. Mm -hmm. Now what? Up until nope. now, when we read these things, we read a lot about their their accomplishment, their backgrounds, the fact that they didn't have any physical blemishes on them, the fact that they were nice looking young men, the, uh, the, the fact that they were highly and well educated, that they had royal blood in them, that, you know, these were exceptional human beings. Yes. And now all of a sudden, bad things have happened to them and they've been taken to a foreign land and they're going to be there the rest of their lives there'll be no redemption physical redemption or relocation back to israel they're going to a foreign land with foreign gods and they're going to have to serve a foreign miss master at least as far as uh, physically, and what whatever happens in their lives is going to listen to me very carefully because really early early on, this is the heart of my sermon tonight. What happens in the lives of good people when bad things happen to them is determined by their relationship with God and their character that has been got that. It, has been placed within them by God. Amen. Are, do you have a right relationship with God? 
Yes. Have you walked with God in good times and in bad? Oh, yeah. It rains on the just and the unjust. My Bible says that. Do you hear me? Amen. Yes. It rains on the just and the unjust. It is not, it is not um, to be ex unexpected that bad things are going to come your way. Sooner or later, they will. When I married your yeah. mother, Linda, I was a widower. When I married her, she was a divorcee. Both of those were because of bad things. Understand? Amen. So, were we both bitter people? I knew that I served a good God. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. And that even though on the surface of things it was a really bad thing, that my God is a good God. And that even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. His rod and his staff, they are with me. He's going to take care of me. He took care of me in the good times, and he'll take care of me in the bad times. He's lifted me up, and he's carried me when I couldn't walk anymore. Do you hear me? And he's done that for you too. God is at his best when life is at its worst. Amen. Amen. That's true. That is so true. So admit it. Let God be God. And don't let momentary or long range even pain turn into bitterness. Let me tell you something. Jesus, hello little fella. Jesus went through an awful lot while he was on this earth. And he never forgot he, who he was doing it for. Do you hear me? I was in my middle 30s when my wife died. Was I, I not, was I supposed to just lay down and die? No. I had children. I had grandchildren. Don't look at it. And I had I still had a life to live, and I was still a father. I still had responsibilities. I still had opportunities. I still had a life to live. I didn't know what was well out there waiting for me. And I want you to understand, I'm glad I didn't give up on life. And I'm glad I didn't give up on God, because God didn't give up on me. Can you say amen? Amen. What happened? Amen. Good, bad things happen to good people, yes. But God is still good, and he's best. He's best. He's best in bad times yes when you can look death in the eye when you can go to the doctor and the doctor says you have stage four cancer and you know you don't have long to live and you can say praise god anyway because Amen. That, Amen. that means one of two things is going to happen god's going to heal you or pretty soon God's going to take you home. Well, what about my family? Who's going to take care of my family? He is. Amen. He has been using you to take care of your family. Well, he'll take care of your family if you're gone. God said that he will never leave you nor forsake you. Nothing bad can happen in this world that will change who God is and what your relationship with God is. The only one that can change your relationship with God is you. Amen. Can you say amen? Amen. I want to go over what these names mean because there's significance to it. In Hebrew, Daniel is the name that mom and dad gave him, that his parents gave him. It's a Hebrew name. It means God is my judge. 
when things happen in your life and people, especially bad things, people will come to you and say, well, don't you hate God? <coughs> you really want to say, that's a stupid question. How can I hate the God that died on the cross and saved my soul? Mm -hmm. Death is a part of life. Illness and disease are a part of life. How can I hate God for a momentary bad thing? Amen. And God is going to come, it's come through for me my whole life. Amen. There are times that thing, bad things happen, and you know what? I don't understand. But it's okay Amen. to not understand what's I, happening because I understand the goodness and the love and the kindness and the mercy and the unchangingness of God that he's the same yesterday when the sun was shining and he's the same today when it looks like I need Noah's ark sitting in my front yard. I know. It. Amen. That's true. He's the same. But you can't mess with it, okay? Yesterday and forevermore. Forevermore. So you see... Let's go over these names. Daniel means God is my judge. And God is the judge. When Amen. people say things during, when you're going through a difficult time, smile and say God is good and then move on. Amen. If they just won't leave you alone after you, if you can't take it anymore, ask them to please just be quiet and leave you alone. The name that, uh, only name that was given by the Babylonians that made any sense at all was what they named Daniel. And that was Belteshazzar, and that is, they said, Belteshazzar means that he's the Lord's leader, and Daniel was certain, certainly uh, the Lord's leader. Now, I want to go, go over the three names, and I'm not going to go back into, into the others. Hebrew names. I just want to go over the three names and then I'm going to be getting to close this thing. The three names that he gave, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. Shadrach, are you ready? The mm -hmm. names that people give you in, in difficult times, the words they try to put on you, Shadrach, has no meaning at all. Mm -hmm. And the things that people say to you in hard times oftentimes have no meaning at all to you because Damien. they're not going through what you're going through. You're going through what you're going through. So put it out of your mind and forget all about it and move on. It's Amen. about your rela relationship between two people, you and God, not you and doofus. You. Amen. Not you and that other person that's not going through what you're going through. Amen. Okay. Shadrach has no meaning. It means nothing. Meshach means nothing. And Abednego means the servant of some man. I don't think I like any of those names. How about you? Mm -mm. Azariah. That's Abednego's Hebrew name. It means God's a keeper. <laughs> Hallelujah. Good times. God's a keeper. In the worst times of my life, God's still a keeper. Because you see those bad things? He didn't do any of them to me. And the one that they changed it. Uh, Shadrach. His real name was Mishael. And I'm going to close with this. It asks, it really sounds like a question, but it's a statement. Who is what God is? I want to ask that question of every one of you, and I don't want you to answer it out loud. Amen. But this is a question. Only you can answer. Your spouse has died. Your child has died. Your mother, your grandmother, 
someone that's very near and dear to you, okay? Someone that's just, is ripping your heart out. At that moment in time, you have the right to ask who is what God is. Amen. And you know what? He'll answer. He'll answer with love, words of love, sweetness, kindness, patience, tenderness, reassurance. That's how he'll answer. Amen. He'll reassure you that he loves you, that nothing has changed, that he has your loved one right there with him, and he's got his hand, arms around them, and he's loving on them, and that for them, this is the best day of their life, and they'll never have another problem for all of eternity, and that very soon, you and he, or you and she, will be joined together. And now you see, the only thing that will keep you apart from him or her is you. Amen. Don't let bad things turn you into a bitter person. Cry out to God and tell him you trust him. Even when you don't understand, especially when you understand. Amen. 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 Praise God. That's a great word for our time. Amen. People always want to say, well, where was God in this? I don't understand. God is a God of love. Then why is this happening? Amen. Mm -hmm. In times like that, you have to trust him. You have to trust God and you have to know that he has your best interest at heart. And sometimes the things that we think we need the most is, is not what God has in store for us. Amen. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes bad things do happen to good people. Sometimes because of decisions that we make in our lives and sometimes because of circumstances beyond our control, like baby Connor, a sweet little innocent baby gets hurt. Mm -hmm. You know, it's so easy to point the finger of blame. But you know what? I'm just thankful tonight that it's not worse than it could have been. You know, even though we're just devastated that our baby is injured and that he shed one tear and was hurt, even one ounce of pain. Amen. But you know, how we feel about him is how the father feels about us. Amen. And it's in times like that that he wants us to cry out to him. Because you know what? He's not just our provider, but he's our comforter. He's Abba. He's our father. He loves us beyond any love that anyone, any human could ever give us. He loves us so much more than that. Amen. 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 So, Kenneth Jr., I'd like to ask you to just close this service out in prayer tonight. Amen. We're going to have service again tomorrow night. 7, uh, 7 p.m. Wednesday night, uh, Kenneth Jr. is going to be ministering, bringing the word. Praise God. Amen. Lord, we thank you for tonight. We ask you, Lord Jesus, as we have listened and prayed and had your word spoken over us and had the word spoken in music and in song, Father, we ask you, Lord Jesus, that you eradicate all fear all anxiety, all worry, and all infirmities that are attacking the body of Christ, whether it be physically, financially, or mentally. In Jesus' name, Father, at this time of trouble and turmoil and desolation, that God is rising up a nation to saying that, no, I will not listen to the atmosphere around me. I will be the child of God that he desired me to be. And we thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen.
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.